This was the year of 2006. It was the year of nukes. North Korea detonated their first, tested their nuclear weapons. And it was, it was the year of dead chickens, bird flu. It was a happy year for Angelina fans. They got their chicken from her pregnancy with Brad Pitt. And it was also a happy year for me as I was gifted my first computer. Now let's rewind one more year backwards, 2005. The government of Assam started a very good project called the Ananda Ram Borwa Award Scheme. There are computers to students doing good in the board exams. They look something like this. Later years, they started shipping laptops. This time, they shipped around 29,887 laptops. But this time, it was a bit different as I was able to play a role in it. I made those laptops to think. I, along with my company, provided the operating system for those laptops. And the OS we provided is an open source project. And what makes it relevant to this talk is that my talk is also an open source. So now here comes the basic question. What is open source? Last year, a student from a top university in India asked me, isn't it open source free? Why you want money for it? Yeah, it's true. There are great open source programs like Mozilla Firefox, which, what you can, which you can download for free of cost. But what really matters is not the price of Firefox, but why does Firefox exist the way it is? That's what really matters. And open source is not just about free of cost software. There are so many examples of commercial open source products that I can write an entire dictionary of it. So then the question is, what is open source? Many people have come up with many ideas regarding the definition of open source. Here's my take on it. For me, open source is a way of life. Life with freedom and how one is supposed to be living it. As human race, we have gone through many phases. In all those phases, one thing was common. We were social. We share food, we share shelter, make families and friends. Mankind is a dominant species on Earth as because we were social. Unlike many other animals who kept the stuff on their own or what we call today as proprietary. So basically open source is to use, share, adopt and collaborate. Open source does not mean free of cost, cheap piece of software. It means a software that can be used, shared, modified to make it better, studied, create derivatives upon. Optimizing a standard software for a more specialized purpose. It grants us the freedom of living a free life. And again here, free doesn't mean free of cost. It means free as in freedom. Price is irrelevant. Firefox exists because of people like us. People who enjoy freedom and we are not afraid of sharing it. Firefox is open source. It is also free of cost, but really th that doesn't matter. Now, you must be thinking that I'm some free software guy. Well, I'm not. And open source is not just limited to software. Here's an open source beer, for example. This particular brand of beer is called Free Beer and is an open source project. Its formula is available under Creative Commons license, which is a popular open source license. Its name is Free because it grants us certain freedom, certain rights. It doesn't mean you can pick it up from some store without paying. Open source lets us to share ideas among our peers. There is no teacher or manager who dictates us to do this or that. Teachers or managers are more like experienced friends in open source. They help us getting things around. I, I, when I was in school, I had a compulsory subject, Sanskrit. I never wanted to study it, and I failed in it. And I like computers, but guess what? It was never made a primary subject. And all they taught in practical was MS Paint. Believe me, I have spent 10 years of my schooling life coloring triangles and squares and circles with color. This makes no sense, right? 
This is because our education system is not open source. I don't know how say some 10, a few hundred people can decide for an entire population of students will study. Wouldn't it be great if every student is allowed to modify the curriculum according to his or her liking so that they can have custom curriculums that may incorporate subjects from all streams or tracks. Doing so will reduce the competition among students and in the process will reduce the emotional pressure they feel due to this competition. Schooling will be a lot more fun and they will not bunk classes. They will love to go to school. We need to open source the system and we need to do it fast. Let's decentralize it. We need to engage more and more students into decision making so that they can help us creating a better system. So that's open source education. Now, what about governance? In recent Delhi elections, we have seen open source methodology in action. I truly believe engaging people into decision making makes sense as expertise and intelligence are widely distributed in society and not limited to one institution. Engaging people into decision making brings back valuable feedback that the government can use for the benefit of the people. They can make better policies. Open source empowers the individual and an individual can make a difference with that power. If you do not believe that an individual can make a difference, I suggest you get some history lessons. So that's open source to use, share, adopt, and collaborate. Open source gives you choice. And choice is good, right? Choice is another name of opportunity. Take me for example. I'm a high school dropout. I'm a software developer. I'm an open source activist. I run a business on open source. The most valuable lesson that I've learned from history is that it takes only one person to make a difference. Today, my product is being used in government projects and also in universities to teach students. Individuals from deprived communities in India and abroad should start similar initiatives to build, to build business around open source and be self-dependent. The government cannot help you unless you try to help yourself. India has so much diversity that it can be a boon for open source projects to evolve and take new shapes. Like say, having optimized versions of the same software for every unique community. So that they can also adopt the technologies of 21st century and be on the same route of development as other so-called forward communities. Open source can help us killing the digital divide. If every community is equally developed and no one feels left behind, will end almost every conflict we have in our today's world. We'll become one meta community. So being one meta community is very important for our existence. Humanity will not go beyond Earth if we keep on dividing and ruling within ourselves. You don't always need to create something new. Just find new and better ideas to solve old problems. That's the spirit of open source. And that's the spirit of humanity to use, share, adopt, and collaborate so that we can become what we were originally meant to be, to be humans. Thank you.